We were all fighting over who gets to ask you the first question. <laughs> Hi, Amy. <laughs> how are you? Good to yourself. Well, I mean, how are you feeling after that? It seemed like a, a whirlwind in there. Oh, that's how I find it. It's always just some craziness. It's never, it's never normal. It's never, uh, it's never just in and out. It's always some craziness happen. Uh, but I feel great, man. It's, it's the first time ever it's a, just to make that walk, to make that UFC walk for the first time in front of a crowd, in front of an audience, and just play my song. And then, uh, you know, and then I have the, I have the rare, the the rare circumstances that I was able to get fans by the time. I was able to make my first walk, so it, it was just a moment I dreamed of my whole entire life, man, and uh, I, I just wish I could relive it, honestly. How much does the crowd actually play into the fight now that you've kind of seen both aspects? <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, it's all, it's always, it always plays big with me. I'm, a, I'm huge with crowds. Uh, I, I've always thrived better in, like, crowd moments. I always just, like, thrive off crowds, and, uh, you know, and I'm a, I'm a fan. I'm a fan-friendly fighter. Like, I go and bring it every time. I'm always in the middle of some chaos. It's never just... Uh, a boring fight with me, and uh, I, I thrive in those situations, and I'm just happy that I, that I could actually have just achieved a lifelong dream of mine. Were you in any danger at all? Because, I, I mean, there were a few times where it was going back and forth. <laughs> I mean, nah, fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> Never. <laughs> so there was some emotion for your opponent. You know, there was, like, a, a backstory about his mother, and... Does that kind of damper a little bit when you think about when you're going in to fight someone that you know that they have that story behind them? I, I didn't. I didn't hear the story honestly. Uh, I was. I. I have a. I have a really big special place in my heart for Matt Schnell. I've. I've watched him forever. And uh, man, when, when I got to the UFC, before I got to the UFC, I won the LFA belt, and he was one of the fighters tweeting. He's like, "Let's go, Brandon Royval. Like Brandon Royval deserves to be signed." And uh, it was one of those fighters. Like I did. I didn't want to fight him. I didn't necessarily want to fight him just because. Uh, you know, I, like that, that guy means, that guy like in the, in the division is just like, he holds a special place. And then I, like I kept telling my coach, I'm like, bro, like I, I kept putting him on a pedestal. Like I knew, I knew I was, and it was just like, I don't know. It was just, it's hard not to like, you know, admire a guy like that. He's been around forever. And uh, you know, I, I didn't hear the story about his mom, but I, uh, fuck man, I, I, it makes me feel even worse. Cause uh, the moment I won that fight, it was just like, I felt good. And then I was so happy. And then I was like, shit, Matt Schnell is like, you know, it, it seemed like he was having an emotional moment, and uh, I just wanted to hug him, and I, you know, that, that you know, I, I didn't know. Did you speak to him at all after? Yeah, I just told him thank you. I thank you for believing in me. Thank you for even mentioning my name when he was in the UFC. You, people don't, you, you don't have to do, when you're a UFC fighter, you don't have to watch the LFA show and then tweet that some of these guys deserve an opportunity. Like, you don't have to go out of your way and do that, and he always went out of his way and did that for me, and... Uh, that was that was a he's a good guy, man. He was a good guy. He bought he got me a present at weigh-ins. He got me. I've never had a, that like UFC card of myself, and he got me like my UFC card or whatever. And I, I have that for the first time. I have my UFC card, and it's just like that guy's that guy's special, man. What do you want next? Um, I just want the quickest route to the title shot. I heard they're doing an interim title shot between Kai Car France and Brandon Moreno. Um, mine and Brandon Moreno's fight was close. I was literally on top of the guy when my shoulder popped out, throwing hammer fist. Kai Car France, I beat him everywhere. I, I dropped him and then also, and also choked him out. It's just like, yo, I want to be the backup for that fight, and I deserve my top five spot back for sure. Thank you. Thank you. Brandon over here. Congrats on winning maybe the most action-packed two-minute fight I've ever seen in my life. I mean, that was just ridiculous. When you're in the, the middle of those crazy sequences of the scrambling and all these submissions, what's it like, like, in that actual moment? Are you even thinking? Hey, a raw dog always packs uh, two-minute action. <laughs> 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 hey, best two minutes ever, always. <laughs> um, no, nah, I never think. I'm just trying to go home. Every, I, as I, like, cherish every second of walking into a fight, and then it's like, I'm like, I'm gonna embrace every moment, and then the moment I step in that cage, and they're like, go, I'm like, get me out of here as soon as possible, I just wanna go home, so, and that, that's my whole entire style, is I just walk board, I'm trying to find a finish on the feet, and if that finish on the feet's not happening, then I'm finding a finish on the ground as soon as possible, and I just wanna go home, and uh, you know, as much as I love this sport, it's just I don't really wanna be in that cage. <laughs> You're a maniac. I love it. Uh, he, he did the double tap. Did you feel like the double tap? Like he did, did he tap, uh, tapped out with both hands? Yeah, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. I think I was feeling him ta tap uh, originally on that. Like I had a, the uh, like one arm arm bar, our, our guillotine. And I was just trying to make that adjustment on my, uh, on my grip. But he was, like, he was already tapping. But yeah, I didn't, I didn't notice a double tap at all. Have you ever had that before? Like have you ever had anybody do that even rolling and just practice or anything? The double tap? No, I've never noticed that. Nice. Well done. New one. Uh, Last thing for me, I mean, you had, I think you dropped a line in your post-fight interview of 
I walk through fire and I don't even get a tan, which to me was one of the best lines I've heard all year. Oh, bro, I said I walk in the fire and walk out with the tan and the cigarette lit. I wish I would have said that part, but, you know. <laughs> hey, was that off the top or did you have already? I, just, I, I was thinking that uh, we were reading this, this book and it was uh, you walk into the fire and you kiss the fire. Or, 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 I messed up the quote for sure. It's great. Why I walk, walk by the, walk back kissing my kid. Walk away whistling. Yeah, yeah. You walk into the fire and then kiss the fire and then walk out whistling. And, uh, you know, I, I always feel like that. I'm, I'm the king of just putting myself in a firefight. I mean, Gagey's the king of that, but, you know, I'm the flyweight king of that. Just walking into the fire and, you know, your boy's trying to get a tan and get that going and enjoy that Arizona, you know? <laughs> Congrats, man. Thank you, brother. Uh, Brendan over here. Uh, I believe you mentioned the interim title fight between uh, Brendan Moreno and Kai Car France. Uh, I believe you fought both of them. Uh, how do you see that fight playing out? Um, I don't know. I don't know, man. That, if that fight could play out anyway, it was a close first fight between both of them. Uh, but you, you know, I think Kai Car France is a. Uh, he looks like his cardio is pretty good. He thrives in it. But I see Moreno winning it, honestly. Is there somebody like uh, out of those two? Like, who do you want to? face the most, I guess. I want to fight Brandon Moreno next. That would be ideal. I think me and him have unfinished business. I was literally on top of the guy when my shoulder popped out. I mean, he's literally the greatest kid ever, but that being said is I want an opportunity to fight him, man. Uh, just see what happens, and uh, I, I think we have unfinished business. Congrats on the win. Thank you for your time. What's up, Brandon? Congrats on the win also. How's it going, brother? Pretty good, pretty good. Uh, how did your training camp for Schnell differ, if at all, than your camps for Bontarine or Pantoja? Yeah, I think we're just getting really smart with it. Uh, we're getting really smart. I think uh, I was so chaotic early on in my career, and, uh, you know, we're, we're getting intelligent. Me and Mark, uh, we, we're like scientists in there now, or at least he is. I'm just, I'm just the guinea pig getting operated on pretty much. Uh, but, uh, yeah, just we're getting, getting a little more methodical with it, gang strategies and all that stuff. And uh, I'm going to go in there and fight no matter what, so I don't think that's a little bit of the issue is just fine-tuning and then, you know, just getting these skills and just getting these skills dialed in and all that. So nothing too crazy different, but uh, definitely, definitely finding the skills up. Definitely. And uh, it seems pretty clear that neither you or Schnell had any animosity for one another. So do you prefer to be in a fight where you kind of hate the guy, have some animosity for him, or do you like it like this where you have such a strong mutual respect for your opponent? Um, I, the whole flyweight division so nice. Like, there's, like, pretty much the only person that's dislikable is Figueredo. The dude looks like such a douche, man. But uh, the whole flyweight division so nice. It's like, uh, you don't even want to fight some of these guys. But I keep running into Matt Snell. I mean, we're talking about life. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, I don't want to fight him. I don't want to, I don't want to damper his dreams. I don't want to ruin anything. He has a family. He has a wife. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, I don't. I don't want to slow that down ever. So it's just like the, the less I know about him, the, the douchier they are is the more I want to fight him. And that's how, that's how I'd prefer it, honestly. And uh, lastly, after fighting in front of a crowd like this with the crowd che cheering your name, chanting for you, if the UFC comes to you and obviously your next fight back at the Apex, how would you uh, feel about that? Oh, man, I'd be so sad. It's like I, you know, the whole entire time when I was like with the whole fight week and I was just thinking like, I just want an opportunity to just gain, gain the opportunity to just make them want me to fight in front of a crowd. Like, you know, I, I, I had people cheering for me and like, you know, I'm always in crazy fights. Like that's, that's going to pull the crowd out of the seat, you know? And, uh, I, that was, the, that was like a little bit of my mission too, is one, get my top five position back. Cause I deserve to be in that top five of the division. And then also is just, you know, gain that, gain that respect that I'm, I'm one of the more exciting, I'm definitely the most exciting fighter in the flyweight division. And I just want to go out there and prove it every chance I get. That's why I dropped. That's why I got dropped. I was like, yo, I got to prove this. This is part of it, you know. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> Thanks, man. Congrats on the win. Thank you, guys.